Hi everybody, welcome to the uh, first in a series of footwear tutorials that I'll be doing using Rhino. Um, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen I've been uh, doing a lot of experimenting just trying to, to apply what I've learned so far about modeling footwear to the Nike's Vapormax shoes, which are somewhat uh, complex, so it's been a good challenge, and I just am making these to share my process and a little bit of what I've learned through this experience with all of you. Um, the So today, this tutorial is just going to cover uh, how to make the upper, how to model the upper of the shoe in a nice, simple way that's, that's going to, uh, and then I'll do subsequent tutorials that will model the midsole and and the tread and, and some of the upper details and everything and hopefully at the end we'll have a nice model that we can render and do whatever we want with. So uh, what you can see going on right now I'm just trying to outline the profile of the shoe from the lateral side using the uh, NURBS N -U -R -B -S, NURBS curve um, command in Rhino. Rhino has a uh, it's really it it's probably my favorite modeling software right now. I started out learning SolidWorks, and uh, SolidWorks is really great for a certain subset of things, and Rhino is really great at a lot of the things that uh, SolidWorks isn't, and then, you know, Rhino also kind of sucks at certain things too. But uh, it has, you know, great curve editing, and so that's just what we're using right now is just the NURBS curve. Uh, it's similar to uh, Bezier curves that you might have used in uh, Illustrator or in SolidWorks if you're familiar with either of those programs. Um, so all we're doing like I said is getting the profile of this and uh, once we have we're gonna basically use a, a series of different NURBS curves to uh, to define the surface that we're going to create the NURBS surface later on in this tutorial. So I used a reference image since you know we're not designing a new shoe for this tutorial, we're just uh, we're just working off of a shoe that already exists. So here's the the same shoe, but looking from the bottom. All we're gonna do is get the uh, outline. <sighs> and uh, if you have any questions specifically about, uh, I guess details in this, like wait, which command is that that you're using right now? You might be able to see in the upper left hand corner. Uh, I'll type in. Um, commands and uh, if not just you know leave something in the comments or message me on Instagram and I'll try to answer questions so like I said right now we're just uh, this is another one of the I guess essential uh, curves that we need to get to define what the what shape the upper is going to be uh, we're creating all these curves right now because we're going to create the the surface the 3d surface that will define the upper of the shoe uh, is going to be created with a series of curves through a excuse me through a command called network surface which is uh, very uh, capable of creating uh, I guess complex organic 3d surfaces so it looks like I've almost got this dialed in I uh, if there's ever a disconnect it's because I record the the screen capture of Rhino first and then go back in and voice over this so sometimes I'm watching myself and going oh what am I doing <laughs> so if you're having the same reaction that's cool okay now that we've got those defined what I'm doing right now is I'm extruding a surface from that curve that we used to define the bottom of the upper and then I'm gonna select that outline of the bottom that we did and project it onto that surface and then hide those two. So what that does is it gives us that same because uh, you know the, the bottom of a shoe or the bottom of a foot isn't flat it uh, has these curves that, that match the that actual anatomical bottom of the foot. So what we've done is taken those two flat sketches and uh, like I said extruded the one and projected the other sketch onto that surface that extruded surface and that gives us this three-dimensional curve that defines the bottom of... It's not really a last that we're making. We're, we're making the upper. Um, 
we're just modeling kind of theoretically this is the shape that the upper that we want to communicate for the upper um, so looking at that from different points of view um, we don't have enough information yet to be able to fully define the surface that we want to create for the upper so I'm just adding uh, some extra things we're going to need like what's the opening of the collar of the shoe and once I have that defined we're going to do the same thing that we did to get the bottom of the upper which is we're going to take this side profile curve looks like I'm almost there So yeah, we're going to take this curve and extrude it to create a surface. And same thing, we're going to take that uh, top sketch that represents the opening of the collar and project it. And then get rid of the other two. And now we have kind of a three-dimensional collar for the top. Line that up with the other curves. Also, uh, if you're new to Rhino, uh, this is more, I'm, I'm not going to take the time and I'm probably not the best qualified person to try to explain all the ins and outs of how to use the software. Um, there are a lot of good tutorials, you know, a variety of them online that you can find if you kind of need to get your head wrapped around, hey, uh, how do I even use this piece of software? Um, but I guess consider this as more of a intermediate to advanced tutorial on modeling in Rhino. Um, so I'm just going to assume that you already have at least a little bit of background in 3D software in my explanations and, and probably already some background in Rhino. So we're getting closer to the uh, number of curves that we're going to need. Not, not that network surface, uh, I mean I think there is a minimum number of curves that it needs, but uh, we just need to create enough curves that they define the shape well enough that the software will understand what we're asking it to do. So I'm just adding uh, some extra curves, this time from like a, a front or a back profile view, to define how, uh, how the shoe is going to be, how the upper is going to be shaped in that direction. You can kind of see we're starting to get the wireframe of an outline of the upper part of a shoe. And actually, to illustrate before, um, to kind of illustrate network surface, we're going to get rid of this extra curve and just do it right now. So, network surface. We'll have it appear on another layer. And then we're just going to select all the curves that are going to inform our surface. And it's going to create a surface out of the network of those curves. Now this might look OK or like pretty close, but we're going to take a closer look at it. Uh, the command is zebra. It puts zebra stripes, or what's called zebra stripes. It's basically a surface evaluation tool. Because um, uh, with the amount of curves that we've given it, it hasn't had enough information to really make the shape that we want. As you can see, I just turned on zebra stripes. And uh, where the lines get really close together, that's where the surface is changing rapidly. So you can kind of see there's a pinch point um, there on the side. So we need to give, uh, that wasn't a great surface. So we're going to give it just two more curves to help define, OK, um, it like it, it pinched in that area because the software was just going off of the information we gave it. We said make a network out of these curves, and so it did. But we didn't give it enough curves to make the kind of surface that we wanted. It wasn't the the right shape, too sharp of transitions. So we're going to go in and define this curve is going to define uh, I guess the midfoot kind of around. I mean I, I'm I'm not. I, I'm, I'd am i like to be a footwear designer, but I'm not one yet, so if you are a footwear designer and you're listening to this and I'm using terms wrong, please let me know. 
anyway, uh, so this curve is going to define kind of what's happening from where your toes meet the, the ball of your foot, the main body of your foot, up to the collar. And honestly, I mean, the, the system that I've worked out, I think this uh, system works pretty well for creating these nice smooth upper surfaces that are simple because you don't you don't want to give it too many curves you don't want to you know use 20 curves to try to define the surface because in the end that's just going to make it messier you want to use as few curves as is appropriate um, so we had too few curves so we're just going to add a couple more but uh, all this is doing right now is we're going to define uh, that kind of front area a little bit more And this is, you know, I mean, obviously this is not just, oh, this is the way to do the upper for this shoe, this VaporMax utility shoe. Uh, I've, I've found that this, uh, I guess, this system of using these types of curves to define a network surface. Uh, you know, if you change any one of these, then uh, you're, you, you can make a variety of silhouettes for footwear. So you could apply this to your own design or, or to do modeling a different shoe for practice. So you can see there, we've made a much better surface. There's no pinching going on. I think I turn on zebra so we can see that. There we go, zebra. So the stripes do still gather because that's where the surface is transitioning uh, a little more rapidly but you don't see any of those weird pinch points. Uh, another way to evaluate this is turning on the rendered viewport, which is a little bit washed out. There we go. So you can see in this one, uh, the light and shadow are falling nicely across our form. So it's nice and smooth. Spinning it around, it's got kind of the correct shape for representing this shoe. So we're happy about that. One thing you can do as well, because um, it takes a lot of trial and error to get the shape right, or I guess it, it will probably take you a lot of trial and error. This is going a little quicker for me because uh, I've practiced this a ton. Um, but if... Uh, so Rhino isn't parametric. It means that you can't go back. Rarely can you go back in and adjust something that you did before and have the changes apply to actions that you took afterwards. But if you, on, at the bottom of the screen, there's a little button uh, that says record history. And if you press that before doing network surface, you can then do what I'm doing right now on screen, which is change the curves that made up the network surface and it will automatically update the surface. So that's a little bit of limited uh, parametric modeling in Rhino. But for the most part, like when you've done something, it's done and you either, if you wanna change it, you gotta redo it. So that's, I guess one of the, I, I don't know if I'd call it a downside, it's just that's the type of software it is. So if you're coming from something like Autodesk Fusion 360 or SolidWorks that is parametric, this is a little different but more capable in some ways, less capable in others. So now that we have that upper, uh, I'm just gonna define the bottom um, because the, the surface that we made is open at the top and open at the bottom, so we need to create a bottom surface to close off this upper. So I'm just putting in another curve there, and I'm gonna extrude that curve. It's a little hard to see because it's gray. But now I have created a surface that's going to represent the, the bottom portion of our upper. And I've made it, uh, sketched it in such a way that it is intersecting with the bottom part of the, the first surface that we made of this upper. So I'm going to go ahead and use a command called split. 
and use that bottom surface to trim off the little bit of that top surface and then conversely I'm going to use that top surface to split that bottom surface so we can trim that and now we have two surfaces that we're then going to join that's that little puzzle piece the command is join into one poly surface and we're going to take that poly surface and we want uh, this transition between the two surfaces for our purposes for modeling this shoe to be smooth so we're going to go ahead and use the fillet edge command and experiment with it a little bit uh, my my biggest pet peeve with Rhino is uh, maybe I it might just be that I'm ignorant about uh, the mathematically how they're going about creating their fillets but um, it's not a very robust <laughs> software for filleting, for giving rounds to edges. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've modeled something and been incredibly frustrated by, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the software not being able to calculate the round that I want to put on an edge. But luckily, this is a pretty simple edge, so it does an okay job. Um, so just evaluating, you know, what I want the distance and type of that fillet to be. We'll get it right here in just a second. And if you've made it this far, congratulations, because we're basically done. Uh, we're just going to check it against our reference image. And so, yeah, you can either take this knowledge and run with it and use it to start modeling your own footwear, or if you want to keep following along, um, in subsequent tutorials, I'm going to show you how to do the midsole of this Vapor Max, which is a little more involved and complex than doing the upper, but uh, you know, you can apply this to a bunch of different uppers for shoes. And I hope you just have a good time modeling footwear. I really enjoy it. Um, hopefully I can turn it into a career soon. I'm an industrial design student still, but I'll be graduating soon and happy about that. <laughs> so checking in against our reference image, looks like we're good to go for this tutorial.